Hey guys, it's your buddy Chopadong here. It's what, Thursday? We haven't done an MLB Made Easy for a while, so let me put one out to you today, show you where we've been going the last week or so in our private VIP chats, the stuff that I really don't share publicly because I've got to leave something for the people that are members of our com community and asking for the coaching to make them better players. I can give you tidbits out here, but I can't give you the real good stuff. You've got to come inside, dfsarmy.com. Use the coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P. And get your butt in here and ask and feedback and go back and forth and interact and all that good stuff and, and learn to build better lineups on your own because, you know, I'm a very teach a man to fish kind of guy. Um, but if we want to talk a little bit about where we've been going today, there's a phenomenal conversation going on in our private rooms. I mean, up and down started last night, still going today as a result um, trying to help some guys figure things out. Uh, I, I can tell you that I am very much trying to help people in every format I possibly can. Uh, I've been playing this game a long time, been pretty successful for a while, and I'm just trying to teach you guys everything starts with your cash build, whether you play cash or not. It starts with the cash build. Learn how to build cash lineups. Learn how to find the chalk. Because inside that chalk is insulation. If you've ever heard the poker term schooling effect, I can sit down at a table of 10 people, and if eight of them are donkeys, it's going to be really hard to beat the donkeys. Somebody in there is going to be getting making horrible plays and getting lucky anyway. DFS cash can be very similar. You're trying to beat the whole school, but because just like little minnows swim around in a school to avoid the big fish, it works in DFS. There's there's safety in numbers. There's safety in the chalk. You can also use things like Vegas indicators and whatever else. And over a long sample of time, you can't beat where everybody else goes when they all have the same information and they all have um, the obvious plays sitting right there in front of them. Almost the mooktard, the idiot that sits there and just plays what people tell him to play has a great shot at beating you when you try to outthink, outsmart, and get fancy. Cash games are not for fancy. Cash games are for obvious. Okay? Now, you want to outthink and outsmart, outwit, outsurvive, outlast, whatever the hell the theme used to be? Then you get smart in tournaments. And if you outsmart the field, you find yourself at the top of the leaderboards. Okay? So you're going to use your cash game methods to set up your day, find out where most everybody is going. Then you're going to start thinking about single entry or maybe league play or whatever it is that you like to do. Then you're going to sit back and you're going to say, okay, so everybody's on this guy. Uh, baseball is very, very volatile. I probably don't need to be on that guy. I can probably bank on him flubbing up and I can probably come over here and pick this other guy who makes sense as well and hope he succeeds. Boom. There's your pivot. You're done. Everybody, you're, you're, you might beat him, you know, 92 to 88. And it happens. That's exactly how it works. And same thing. You know, you might take a little bit more risk because you're playing more people. It's harder to get to the top of the pile when you're playing 20,000 people than when you're only playing 200 people. So you're trying to make even bigger pivots, bigger chance, you know, taking bigger risk, whatever. You're stacking your lineups. You're using correlated points. You do realize that when you got four bats in the same offense in the same lineup, if that offense gets shut out, 40% of your lineup is toast. It's very hard to overcome that. You're not winning a tournament, a large tournament that way. Your night's over. But when you spread out and you've only got two from here and two from here and two from here, now what you've got is, a, it, it, it's like walking on ice, on thin ice. You're safer if you spread out your arms and your legs and kind of crawl on your belly than if you walk on your own two feet. You're concentrating your power. You're going to break through the ice more often. You're trying for a cash game. You're just trying to stay afloat and stay in the top half of the contest. Therefore, you're lying down on your belly on that ice and trying to spread out. You don't want to be too concentrated on one single offense. You'll break through the ice. You want to be uh, spread out across this one and this one and this one and this one. And have, a, have your finger and your toes in each one of those offenses that you can because your night is going to be safer. No single bad game can tank you. That's really all we're doing. And we're just building in different formats. So... If I was building with cash games, I can go through my routine here. Uh, lickety split. Let's just say that all of tonight's outside of that one game, all of tonight's 
uh, games are on that main slate. So I'm going to come up here, short, sort by K score, show you that Blake Snell, Charlie Morton, Andrew Haney, Sean Manaya are all up here kind of towards the top, mostly these two at 88 and 7,500. In order for me to give up this kind of a K score off of a Blake Snell, you're going to need to give me a cheaper price. And Andrew Haney's not enough at 400 bucks. Hook or hook or hook or whatever isn't enough at six at a thousand dollars. What however you pronounce his name at 5700. That's too risky for me. I'm not going to touch him. I'm not giving up that much K score for that much savings. Right? The, the cheaper dudes are already at the top. It takes a Walker Bueller and takes him down in my rankings. A Sean Manaya down a little bit in my rankings. They're going to be heavily owned pitchers because they're consistent. They're brand names. They're probably facing weaker teams. They're you know again they're consistent. So, but I'm probably going to look at a Blake Snell. Highest K score, cheapest price. It's favored. It's in a good matchup. Boom, done. See ya. Probably it for me when it comes to pitching. I'm going to come down here to the W score, and I'm going to sort that by top to bottom, and I'm going to say these are the teams I want to stack at, or, or look into stacking. I may not stack them all heavily. I'm just looking into it. Atlanta, Detroit, Chicago, Minnesota, Tampa Bay, you know, L.A., I'm looking kind of for these guys that are over about a 650. So three or four teams I'd probably key on tonight. The other guys are just in mediocre matchups. One might get lucky and go off. One might fall flat. I don't know. But if I ran this slate hundreds of times, generally speaking, Atlanta, Detroit, Chicago, Minnesota, probably going to be in the top performing groups of teams more often. More often than even the Dodgers and the Yankees today. Okay, just it's based on a pitching matchup. So now that you've got some things to key on, you'll just sit back, you wait for some ownerships, wait for some projections. You'll zig when the when the team, you know, when everybody else zags in a, in a tournament, especially a single entry tournament, because you're trying to get different. You're building slightly suboptimally on purpose so that you can kind of let big chunks of the of the population fall to the wayside when they guess wrong. And that should leave you standing at the top when you're right. That's all tournament play is. Cash games, you're probably going to want to stay within those heavier owned offenses. It may not go by this sheet. Atlanta may not be the highest owned offense tonight. It may be somebody like, you know, I don't know, Boston or something, in which case you might want to consider a lot of Boston players tonight if you're staying in those chalkier spots. Because again, there's a little bit of safety in that number. You're, you're in those numbers. You're trying to hide kind of within the herd and then separate yourself at the very, very end. Jump out of that herd at the very, very end. Okay. And that's essentially just the philosophy of MLB DFS. It can't get easier. If you want to look at other situations, you might pare things down by looking at trends. And this can help with some cash game guys too, because again, there are just too many viable players on a slate like tonight to you know, pigeonhole yourself down to thinking that these two or three or whatever guys are the best. And I've got these 12 guys suggested to me they're the only ones I should consider. No, bullshit. You can consider 40 or 50 guys on a big slate. They're, it's baseball. It's random. Their range of outcomes is very, very wide. They're projected at 12 points. They can score between 0 and 50. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to be somewhere in that range, though. More often than not, they'll be centered around 12, whatever. But sometimes they're going to score 40 points. You can't predict that. You also can't predict when they're going to score 0. That's the problem. That's why baseball is so hard to beat consistently. You can still do it over a course of a season, but people get frustrated after a week or two. When I have taken this, that's a big list, man. When I take this list and try and cut it down to about, I don't know, 25 to 40 players, that's better. Now I'm looking at which teams I want to focus on from a hot hitter angle, right? Like I'm looking at Atlanta, Boston's pretty hot right now. LA, LA Dodgers are getting hot again. New York, Oakland, multiple guys. San Diego's hot, four batters over a 435 Woba and a 200 ISO over the last seven days. Yeah, that's worth mentioning. And if you get a new pitcher, somebody we don't know about, you might want to focus on some San Diego in your tournaments and stuff tonight. If they're not carrying very high ownership, you might turn around and say, holy crap, nobody's on these guys. Nobody's on these guys tonight. And... They're hot. Well, take a chance. I guarantee you their, their chances of breaking the slate are, are, you know, almost as good as ever. You know, they're, they're, are they going to break the slate with 15 other teams they're competing with? No, probably not. The odds of anybody, of you picking just one team and it being right is way, way, way low. So in our MME type of stuff, 
after we do our cash games and then do some S, you know, single entry or three max type pivots and stuff like that, then we can focus on our MME. And when we focus on our mass multi entry stuff, all we're doing is we're looking at casting a wider net. So maybe I like San Diego tonight, but guess what? I should probably pay attention to Boston. Should probably pay attention to the Dodgers. Should probably pay attention, you know, to whoever else, San Francisco, Atlanta, whatever. I should probably pay attention to teams that are highly owned because everybody's data is pointing them to those teams, but I should probably take some pivots. I'm casting a wider net because I'm making 100 and 150 lineups. I can take eight teams here and eight teams there, eight, you know, eight, you know, eight stacks of this team over there and whatever and mix and match and get some Boston and New York and some Boston and Atlanta and Boston and LA and Boston and Minnesota and whatever and hope to pair up some of the right combos that get me really deep into one of those giant tournaments and knock the thing over. That, again, is the essential part of MME. This stuff isn't rocket science, but you could use all of these guys. You can consider them for cash games when we're talking about, hey, you know, may, maybe you'd want to consider, um, you know, some hot hitter right now, like Gliber Torres was brought up to me earlier. You look over to Gliber Torres, and we're looking at a 495 Wobe over the last seven days. Yes, he's hot. You know, you might look at uh, San Diego today and you might see up oh, Tatis is not in there anymore, right? But Tommy Pham and Manny Machado are. You might look up here and see that JD Martinez is a popular play today. Well, JD Martinez hitting 600 Wobe over the last seven days. Duh. You should probably consider him. Makes a great cash play because not only is he in a good matchup and popular today, he's also hitting really, really well right now. So he's probably kind of one of those cash core type of plays that just lock in and move on. You'd pivot off of him in a tournament, maybe, but in a cash game, you'd probably lock him in. Okay, that's all this stuff is. So when I'm looking at things like our MLB chalkboard, I'm looking for the big ownerships if I'm building for cash. And I might start with a Sean Mania or a Walker Bueller or a Blake Snell in my cash building in uh, DraftKings. I might start here with Blake Snell because he's got really, really good ownership and he's cheap. Okay, so maybe he's the guy I lock in. I come down here and Mitch Garver might be important at 24%, you know, so maybe I have to use him. If I come down here, I'm getting out of the herd. And when I get out of the herd, I'm starting to take some risk and I don't want to take a lot of risk in a cash game. Come down here at first base. It's actually, see, look at the difference, 24 to 17 to 11. It drops off pretty quick, whereas 18 to 17 to 14 really doesn't. These guys are all kind of viable, depending on what you want. Maybe Dalbeck becomes very important because it's a way to get value and get a lot of ownership. A lot of people will take that route. I'll build very similar lineups to everybody else. Therefore, I'll be really, really glommed up around that money line. If you're trying to win 100 man 50-50, you're doing it wrong. Okay, You're not trying to win. You're trying to get in the top half. I don't care if you finish 48th. You're trying to get in the top half. And this is what's going to get you there is paying attention to this ownership. Now, you might look at this and say, wow, too many people are using Dobby, uh, Bobby Dalback. So in a tournament, damn, I'm not using him. That's when I'll pivot up to uh, Otani and where everyone else is going cheap, I'll go expensive. And that will make me save money somewhere else where everybody else is spending money and I'll have a different lineup. It may still be very sensible, but it's going to be different. That's what you're trying to do in your tournaments. But look, Ozzy Albies, 26, 25 for Brandon Lowe. They're pretty interchangeable today. I don't care which one you lock in. doesn't matter. But you might not want to use LeMahieu, Kiki. Yeah, I mean, they're all reasonable and they're good tournament options, but you might want to use them in cash because too many people are going to be up here. Down here, pretty wide open at third base. They're all about the same, right? Notice how I'm using these more of my projections, more of my indicator of where I should go. Down here at shortstop also, not a very big drop off, especially between Swanson and Tatis. Right. So I'd probably be focused there. If I'm looking at Taylor Wade, Tyler Wade and Paul DeYoung, I'm looking at tournaments, man, because they're not carrying any ownership. They might be great. They might hit a home run. They're very they're a contrarian play today. You might see numbers that make you want to take that chance, but keep it to tournaments. In your cash games, you may say, man, I love Paul DeYoung. He married my sister, you know, or whatever. And I, I owe the guy a Christmas gift and blah, blah, blah. Man, screw that. Get that shit out of your head. In a cash game, he's not viable today. You need to be up here. And then when you're looking at outfielders, same diff. All these guys here are all pretty viable. And you're usually looking for a key value play. Jock Peterson is a boomer bust guy. Enough people will be on him. Does he make sense for cash? Maybe. Come down here. You might want to be down here more in the Dylan Carlson, Hunter Renfro type range. Those are the things you're going to do. And then, you again, you make those pivots for tournaments. I just want to share this stuff with you and explain to you this is what we talk about in here. 
when we're talking all the time. So get your butts in here and become a better DFS player. This is Thursday. MLB Made Easy. Peace out.